it's a very experienced player, very innovative deck builder as well. And it's going to be that rogue of hyped. Now, this appears to be Hogger is being teched into this deck here. We definitely <laughs> nice. didn't see that in previous days. Um, yeah, that's true. Hyped definitely taking advantage of the, uh, the format here and teching in some different cards for the final day. That's a good tactic um, because uh, the opponents will not know what kind of threats will they will be facing each time, so they may misplay uh, when they will be mm, like when they will ma make some assumptions when they will play the cards on uh, some threats being played by hyped, and they will miss something that will come later on during the game. Like uh, maybe they will use a hex on something that is not really so mm, so important because hyped just added a bigger threat. You know that kind of strategy. Sure, and we're seeing the uh, the Paladin deck from Hueva against oh, his Death Rattles coming in. Haunted Creeper. This could well be a faster Paladin deck than we've maybe seen. Uh, in fact, it does look like it has a little bit more down the bottom end of the deck with the Haunted Creepers and things like that. Um, not always a choice, but it, otherwise it feels like a, a pretty standard archetype. Yeah, well, um, almost every paladin can play with that one hunted creeper just because uh, most of paladins are also play, play also playing the uh, the um, defender of Argus at least one and uh, hunted creeper save um, is, has the same power purpose as uh, zombie Charles. So this is just an early game to battle those early game minions from aggressive decks. Absolutely, no. Hyped obviously decides to go for the hero power there, just a very passive turn, rather than playing something like uh, like an Annoyatron. What do you make of his uh, slightly cagier play at the start of this game? Hmm, it's really a tough nut to crack. Like, um, as the rogue, you have so many minions, so you want to build a board, but you don't really want to uh, to play those minions when they will be easily traded with. Um, Many efficient minions from Paladin's side. And you definitely want to be playing those mechs when you can get the buffs from things like the Iron Sensei, which I would assume is, is still in this deck. Um, was playing Mech Warpers as well, so wants to get the, the ramp into them. But he's going to go ahead and coin out an Arcane Nullifier. Um, and speaking of efficient, the Arcane Nullifier is going to get a lot of work done here. Yeah, the Arcan Nullifier will be a great choice, but still there there is a True Silver Champion which will easily uh, deal 4 damage to the Nullifier and then it can be traded with something um, on board from from um, Weaver, right? Yeah, absolutely, and the True Silver Champion is going to come down, trade with the Haunted Creeper and continue to build up the board of Weaver. Fan of knives, though, in hand for hyped, which is going to be able to deal with the spider as he wants. It's um, it, it still doesn't have an easy way to clear that zombie chow. That's the problem. Like yeah, next turn, he can. Next turn is just an anatron, an agent that that will deal with the turn one zombie chow. So <laughs> that zombie chow will st uh, will be standing on his feet for five turns in a row. That zombie child getting a lot of work done. It is doing a lot of damage as well. Uh, backstab coming to hand, so he now has all the tools he needs to deal with that. But does he want to? Like, um, you can, well, you can. Off the divine shield from the mini bot, then you can backstab the mini bot, kill the zombie child with your agent, and play the anoitron. But the anoitron will be. Uh, would be killed by the True Silver Champion. Still a good trade, though. Yep, so the Zombie Chow is finally going to get taken off the board. Oh, he's not opting to play the deck step at all. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and use the weapon. So, could be a Sludge Belcher coming down here, but also uh, Haunted Creeper, Silence if he wants to use it, but that feels like a an inefficient use of that. Let me think. Well, Belcher still feels like the best best option here. It can easily deal with everything uh, from a rogue side, and I'm not I'm not sure if Weaver is aware 
what uh, what is the exact uh, exact um, exact type of rogue that he is facing. So maybe he's just playing safe here with the, with the peacekeeper. Yeah, so he does have the bomb lover here if he wants to try and clear things off board, and he does have those two minions there. But uh, he's going to start at one to establish his board here, double bomb lover in fact in hand, so he's going to want to start making use of these. Those bomb blobbers are interesting, but they have uh, little value against Paladin, and at least when there are when there are um, recruits present on board. But uh, that peacekeeper agent is being able to, uh, you know, um, kill off those pesky one ones just to get a value bomb blobber from that. I'm really curious why did uh, why did hyped? Oh, okay, okay, he's playing around consecration. Consecrate, yes, sir. He didn't attack with the agent just to get him above two points of health. Yep, so the Sludge Belcher coming down along with a Haunted Creeper and uh, an Azure Drake coming into hand, which could be a, a good pickup for Hyped here. Just hmm. see what he's going to do. He does have the second Bomb Lobber, he could possibly try and hit the sludge belcher but that feels uh, well, a little bit risky yeah there's no um there's no aoe to play after you play that bomb lover like you don't even have the mana to play a second fan of knives if you have a second fan of knives in your deck yep so he's probably going to go ahead and yeah puts down the azure drake can eviscerate the sludge belcher here if he wants to, to clear that main body and, and actually i think you should board. i think you should do it it's just an efficient way to deal with a 5 HP minion. So you want to do this uh, when you get the chance. Yep, so he's going to go ahead and use the spell power to clear the Sludge Belcher uh, and finish it off. Leave just the Haunted Creeper on board. True Silver Champion, though, is kind of a problem. Um, well, he's gonna it, be able to use it will to deal with the Azure Drake. Drake. Yeah. yeah. But uh, now that True Silver Champion is down and uh, nobody will play in the hand for Wave of Kevin. As a muster for battle if he wants to use that and maybe a defender of Argus but the Dr. Boom could well come that's going to be a big turn for Hyped for sure these these minions you know it's good to get board presence but these little one attack minions and the one attack weapon really aren't going to help help Wave of Kevin as we get into this late part of the game well uh, he just showed that he doesn't have the quartermaster because the quartermaster will be for sure a uh, <laughs> better play than the defensive Argus Absolutely. on turn 8 so Hyped can be uh, like safe from next turn he unless there will be a top deck quartermaster he knows that those 2-2s two and 1-1s one will still be uh, with those stats so playing Dr. Boom now will feel really good because those bombs probably have a lot of value Definitely. So th this is just an easy Dr. Boom turn, do you think? I think so. And here it comes. Dr. Boom coming down straight away. And a little bit of trading to clear out the board. Undertaker into hand for Hueva. Uh, a little bit late on that. But the equality, I guess, he's just going to try and clear out everything on board and hope the bombs don't screw him up too much. Yeah, well, he has to do it. That's unfortunate for him because he's running out of cards. So unless he draws into Azure Drakes, Land Hands, uh, his value, the cards he has, he has in, its, uh, in his hand are just really of low value at this point of the game. Undertaker, while drawing just one card, is probably just still a one-two minion because there are so many non death rattle cards uh, in this Paladin probably. So it looks like he might actually leave the bomb standing here to prevent that damage. He's gonna he's gonna go ahead and kill one of them, and crucially plays the Undertaker after killing the bomb. Mm -hmm. so he doesn't doesn't want that to die. Yep. Yeah, so he's gonna clear both the bombs out before he plays the Undertaker. Lose a couple of minions in the process, but does keep his Undertaker protected. Uh, Hyped can sprint here if he wants to, or he could play uh, he could play his Max, the Iron Sensei. Harvest Golem and Neutron. I think you, you play 
you play those minions. You just yeah. saw an equality and there was no consecration. So there, there are little um, little chances of uh, seeing that in the next turn. When you're, if your Anartron will get buffed, then you're really ahead. Absolutely. And, uh, Maybe you, could, you just even dagger up and not play the Harvest Golem. Yeah, I mean, I guess what you said, that's right. What you're saying about wanting to make sure you buff the Anoyatron, that is what he's thinking about. You know, I guess you're not too worried about this Undertaker when you're only seeing one card in hand. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, if you're going to clear out these spiders, you can easily clear out the spiders, and then you have. Uh, okay, I was going to say you you don't play the bomb lobby. I was assuming you play the Iron Sensei there. I'm curious and... why did he choose to do that. I guess he was trying to kill the Undertaker, but... And that Undertaker... Take... <laughs> Undertaker value just went up with that single Doctor Boom, because every single uh, every single of those bombs have a death rattle effect, so they are adding up to that Undertaker. Yep, the complexion of this game just changed, and the board has turned around completely. Uh, no sprint, definitely an option for hype. Sprint, not an option for hype here. Uh... Weather Kevin is all in, but there is nothing that Heights can do to really kill off this uh, this Doctor Boom on board. Yeah, well, he still has a lot of uh, health points, so maybe he will try to sprint here and kill. Do you kill off the Undertaker the as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. Well, it depends. Maybe you sprint first. If you see an Eviscerate, then you can uh, Eviscerate the. Dr. Boom and kill it off with a uh, bomb lobber. Yeah. Oh, but sprint never feels this comfortable when you're... But it looks like that might be what Hype is thinking about right now. It's a very difficult turn. One of those turns where he has to pick a line of play. One, No, they're not obvious lines of play. And whichever one he picks is possibly going to determine the course of this game. He's going to go for the mechs. One point of damage from the bomb. Which is really also important yeah. in, in this match, because this the shaman, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the paladin lacks burst damage, so death bombs are like the only burst that he has. So he does have to play the max. He gets the mech warper buffed up to a four five thanks to the iron sensei, um, but now hyped is the one running out of car running out of cards in hand. He's gonna have to sprint fairly. No, you don't have to worry. He will just top deck in preparation next turn. <laughs> the Aldor Peacekeeper coming down. That could be a little bit of an issue, though, because those mechs can still be buffed even after they've been uh, debuffed, if you like, from the Aldor Peacekeeper. Yeah, he has to deal with the Iron Sensei uh, right now. Iron Sensei, not a hugely popular card. Oh, and the second bomb only does one damage as well. That's unfortunate. Iron Sensei is a card that could just mess you up so much. And is he just going to go face with the Doctor Boom? He is. Probably a sensible decision from Kevin. He's thinking about silencing the Harvest Golem, I think, to try and just cut off cut off the oxygen supply to, to Hype's board. Hogger Nasty coming to But there's not silence in, in Weaver's hand, so <laughs> this might be awkward. Now, when does he have the time to play that sprint? This might be a problem. It's always it's always awkward trying to find a turn to play sprint when you have a, an optimal board. You know, when that board was cleared a couple of turns ago, maybe he could have sprinted uh, at that point. Hmm. So, um, you want to clear those one ones because uh, it's getting really. Uh, really, um, Weaver is getting really deep into this into his deck, and there are probably two quarter marshals there. So every single of those one ones will can be really crucial. Does he sap the peacekeeper? He's thinking about it, but <sighs> off board. But you do risk the peacekeeper being played again. And he's gonna so play he's, the hawker. Yeah, he's playing the Hogger, but uh, literally he knows that the Hogger will have no effect at all the, because of the Owl next turn. Well, there's a piloted Shredder. He's saying well played. 
I'm not really sure why. I think it's just about mind games. I, I think he just wanted to applause the hugger play. <laughs> hugger, of course, uh, a, a card that's been te been teched into some decks in the past, teched into decks like Control Warrior. Uh, this is certainly the first time I think I've seen Hogger in Rogue. Silence does come down. In fact, the Aldor Peacekeeper, that dog has been very much neutered there. Micromotion, not a great top deck. Now we just have to sprint. You have to sprint. There's, and uh, SI7 Agent Backstab, that's actually a pretty good pickup. Yeah. Because that's going to enable you to clear out the Dr. Boom here. Well, you have to sacrifice two creatures for that. But still better than nothing. Well, not, ne not necessarily, because you can use the backstab and the SI7. No, no, you can't use the backstab because uh, Dr. Boom is already being damaged. Oh, of course, yes. You're correct. So it's been a long few days. Well, mm, you have to use the backstabs a a backstab anyway. So I think you use the backstab to the Peacekeeper, finish it off with, um, with the agent, you sacrifice... No, wait, you have to use the agent for the block of booms. Never mind. So you have to sacrifice uh, probably Golem and Hogger for Dr. Boom. Then you can finish off Peacekeeper with your dagger and just pray for a miracle. Yeah. Uh, looks like what's going to happen. Golem. It's actually sacrificing the Mech Warper. Does that feel like maybe a little bit of a misplay? Because he can't. He now doesn't get the. Uh, the effect from the mech warper when he could have just traded the hogger, the, the, which is pretty useless at this point. For duty. But uh, that piloted shredder coming down with the sludge belcher and the damage is going to start to come in from Kevin. It's difficult to see. Ragnaros, well, that's not going to save Hyped, unfortunately, at this point. He's probably going to have to just play the arcane nullifier to, to stall. I guess at this point you just throw down all the mechs in your hand, Lothar. Great, so Lothar is just disconnected again a little bit, uh, which is great. So I will uh, attempt to keep this on the rails until we get him back. But yeah, so just opting to throw down all the, the mechs there. The Arcane Nullifier is uh, very important, obviously, to stall that damage. Knife Juggler... Actually, the placement of this knife could be kind of crucial. For duty. It's a lot of targets. Hits the micro machine. That's not what he needs. So he's going to have to trade for the arcane nullifier. Black Knight coming into hand. That's going to be a huge draw to get rid of the sludge belcher. But he's going to have to clear pretty much everything on board if Hype wants to stay alive. So you can use the Black Knight to get rid of the Sludge Belcher. Uh, you do have minions to trade for everything on board. So the Black Knight is going to be the play here. So many and then I assume trading the 3-3 uh, the three, three and the 3-1 into the 1-2 and the 3-2. The and the, the Hogger will probably get traded here as well. He'll try and keep the Pilot and Shredder alive. May well even use the Dagger to kill the 1-1. One, one, which would be... Uh, a risky play to give up his life total like that, but what does the Paladin have that can deal that damage? Well, I guess a, a second True Silver Champion would be important. Something like a Muster for Battle would help. But uh, it's going to be some trades here. In fact, yeah, he is going to go ahead and use his face here for trades. Because he has... Well, if he has... Yeah, because he has... The um... And to be able to deal and has to be able to deal with whatever comes out of it. So I assume the 3-3 three, three is gonna go to the 4-1 here to give himself the four attack. Oh no, he's gonna trade. Gets a light well, actually. Lightwell could well be the MVP here, because the light well is gonna heal him next. So whoever needs to draw to two damage, Sylvanas is not it. So that's just gonna be played out. I have no time um, and that's going to be a little bit of a difficulty for Hype to deal with, but for the moment, and he's at, he's going to be praying that that light well goes onto his face. It doesn't. It heals the dark, the Black Knight for one. Well, oh dear. At this point, Hype is just hoping and praying. 
Looks like he's going to use the dagger to attack one of the... So many options. Perfect. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure if I'm being DDoS or... Does my... Isn't just my internet provider being... Sloppy. Well <laughs> oh, really? Oh, wow. So I'm alone, okay. So, um... Weaver just won the game against Hype. Uh, this is awkward. <laughs> uh, well, um... So that's, um... 1-0 start for Weaver here. And we'll have to see... Uh, the next, um... N n next, major, next game between those two players. And... Hyped is getting a, a really hard time here. He's a uh, he's the f um, he's the favorite of this uh, of this match. So, uh, as we saw so before, Nimsh and Colento already um, being uh, being beaten out of the uh, beaten by the uh, underdogs here. Uh, this might mean uh, that Hyped might might join those two guys. Hyped has still his Warlock and Droid against the setup of Weaver. Weaver has Paladin, Droid and Warrior. So probably Hyped will have to choose um, the Warlock against the Paladin. And this is the case here. The, the Handlock against Paladin is uh, not an easy matchup for sure. Uh, as Paladin has equalities and uh, Consecration which can uh, easily deal um, with the entire board from... Uh, from handlock, and this is a problem that uh, that hyped will have to ignore, and he has he has just to overextend the board at some point. And the problem is that Weaver has also become harder in his deck, as we can see in his opening hand. So, not a single giant will be safe from hyped. But on the other hand. Hype did uh, uh, did draw the crucial Twilight Drake, so he's uh, sure of having a minion on turn four, which is uh, turn four, which is very crucial um, in every single match from Handlock for Handlock. What is really bad? What lo what looks really bad for for Hyped here is that uh, the Quartermaster will be played on turn four, so unless Hyped finds a way to deal with those creatures uh, on board now. He will face three, six, uh, three, uh, three, three minions on turn four, which is insane. Hi, Colin. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that happened. I'm not sure what's going on, but we are back now. Uh, I actually I post I went back and posted in Twitch chat so that they can know in, from the future that there might be some problems. Hyped is at 14 points of health against the Paladin at 10-5. That's insane. 10-4 Quartermaster, 10-3 of course, Master for Battle. Value well, of that Quartermaster. It's just building up an insurmountable board here. He does have a giant in hand, but uh, Luffy's like, this actually might be too far ahead. Yeah, he has the Shadow Flame, but still, you just lost the Shadow Flame to to a basically two cards. Because Hunted Creeper and Massive Battle was uh, were killed by this by that Shadow Flame, and that's it. You have to still to deal with. Crazy amount of creatures that the Paladin just drop afterwards, but that's the second time we we'll see a zombie show against Handlock. I'm entirely sure if I would even play that. You think it's just such a bad card you would uh, you wouldn't even bother playing it in this matchup? It, it, just in this matchup, that's that's my um, that's my like I don't know impression of the of zombie show in against Handlock. Like they can. Handlocks can easily take advantage of that zombie show. They can play the Molten Giants first, and they can uh, then then uh, later on they can play the Dark Bomb or Hellfire or whatever just to kill that zombie show and get the health back. 
So it's like an additional heal um, for them uh, in, in, uh, in this matchup. So the Mountain Giant is going to come down along with an Ancient Watcher, but uh, just looking at the damage on board, it's really starting to pile on for Hueva here. Has a true Silver Champion in hand, so he's uh, getting very close to lethal, but obviously you've got to be aware of the Molten Giants. I've got the beast in my side. Yep. There's, a, there's a one that we see in... In Hype's hand, and the big game hunter making a lot of work uh, in this matchup. Matchup. This is like the D card to have in your in your deck when you're facing a handlock. We were thinking about getting getting Hype to ten points of life, which is risky at this point of the game. Oh wow, Millhouse Mana Storm from Hype <laughs> Shredder. That's like the best outcome possible. Absolutely, because you don't get the downside of the battle cry. Yep. Oh, and there's a second Molten oh, Giant. Man. Double Molten Giant can be taunted up here, and that is that's just such a crushing blow from when you're so, playing against Handlock. So you can now play Life Tap, play Double Molten Giant, taunt up, and then play Dark Bomb on the Zombie Chow. And that's probably what uh, what hyped will gonna do. Double free molten giants. Yep. Said about uh, the the zombie chow. It dealt two points of damage, which was crucial also to play those molten giants. And now it will also get back uh, the handlock to fifteen points of life. Absolutely, and if that Dark Bomb does come down, it's going to be able to have maximum value for the Handlock, because he no longer has to worry about Molten Giants. Jiraxxus in hand as well, so it's very important to get the Molten Giants out before you play Jiraxxus. Hmm. Well, still, 15 points of life, two Molten Giants on board, feels safe. Truce over champion coming down. So he can he can trade for one of these giants and take a big amount of damage to the face, but it really feels like no fun play for the paladin here. Yeah. Well you have to play Sylvanas this turn, I think. If you don't play Sylvanas this turn, then when do you want to play it anyway? Well, I think he's just so desperate to get damage off board. He's going to Eldor Peacekeeper. And he's going to trade two minions for that other giant. So he has managed to neutralize the giants on board. Mirho's Mana Storm is doing some serious work here. <laughs> Taking four points of damage uh, to the giant. Minions left on board for the handlock are not particularly uh, appealing. Does get a Sengen into hand. Sengen's a card that's in in right now, and uh, it's coming into a lot of decks. Lothar, what do you make of the the reappearance of the Sengen? It was a card that really fell out of favor because of Sludge Belcher. Uh, I feel it's um, they're making a comeback just because uh, Hunter and more uh, and more aggressive decks are just spawning, being spawned. Uh, in the meta game, like you know, the mech mage, uh, the uh, the rogue that can also go aggressive route, and all those decks are are kind of struggling with every single town. Like an example, the the mage will have to sacrifice the the creature, or just play a fireball to get rid of um, a sanction. And most of the time, they want to uh, to preserve that that fireball a finishing blow. And is this going to be a Jiraxis here? It feels like the best thing to do. And yep, here comes Jiraxis. Healing back up to 15 effectively. Hmm. Well, 11 points of health, that's still a lot. But Dr. Boom will make some serious work here. Because now the bots, uh, every single damage from the bots is counting like for double just because uh, the 
the uh, the handlock has no re no way of healing apart from siphon souling, and that's still only ten points of life, and you have uh, six points of damage on board. When you count those bombs, they can be transferred into lethal next turn. Absolutely. So do you do you obviously have to side you well you have two big game hunters in hand, so I guess you want to BGH one of the, the, the seven seven and then uh play your mountain giant. Mm, no, you have to play the siphon soul on the peacekeeper, I think. I wonder. So you play BGH Siphon Soul? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, we'll see what hype's gonna go for here. Well, you can't really let anything live because uh, there's seven points of attack on board, so it's lethal if you don't heal. And thanks to the power of uh, Twitch stream delay, I've just seen the finish of the last game, finally. So uh, I saw what happened there. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, that's much better than I, what I proposed. Yeah, so he's going to use the taunt here and, and start to defend himself a little bit more, dig up some damage, take up some damage. But those uh, those bombs could still do work here if they hit the right targets. Sylvana's going to come down now. Sylvana's being taunted up, probably. He can still get lethal with lucky bombs. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he could, he could run both his bombs into the, the BGH here. Yeah. I guess you taunt up the Sylvanas and the Mech Warper. Well, he's okay. He's so the, the, not the Mech yeah. Warper, the Elder yeah. Peacekeeper. Sorry. Okay. Oh, points of damage. That's cool. We can actually. And one oh. point of damage to the face. If he'd actually, not if he got enough, yeah, if he got enough on that uh, Infernal, he could have pushed through for damage next turn, but. There is a Siphon Soul still in hand for Juraxis. Well, Hyped has to uh, has to deal some somehow with Sylvanas. So probably he will attack first with the Inferno, kill off the Sylvanas, make a 50-50 to for the Owl. And if if the if that not will be the case, then he will kill the Ancient Watcher with his Owl and Siphon Soul, the Peacekeeper. Now, <laughs> these plays are so marginal in Jaraxxus. It's where well, you have so little health, and you you still got to find your way to win and could do nineteen damage to the Paladin here. That's fifteen now, but that's still not enough. Yeah, sure. And he he has to deal with the Sylvanas first anyway. Think of it. He's gonna oh, siphon, siphon soul. souling first. That's really, really risky. If the, if that will take the inferno, it boom. takes the owl. Okay. That's well, the that best is the outcome for sure. Yep, that is the perfect outcome. He's gonna go ahead and kill the owl off, summon another inferno, and now it's hyped. That's really pressing the agenda here. And also, over champion. Weaver has the worst possible card in his hand. Zombie yep. Chow. He does not want to play that in any way, shape, or form. But he does get True Silver Champion, and that's going to allow him to push through this taunted Infernal. Yeah, so if he gets uh, a Consecration next turn, he will be able to uh, finish the game, most probably. Unless then there will be an additional Tout Giver for Hyped. Well, we're going to see Let me think. what Hyped can do here. He does have a Mountain Giant in hand, but it's not very efficient. Dr. Boom as well. Uh, that feels like possibly the better play to try and rein the damage in. And uh, I feel like Kevin might be having some technical issues now. And he is roping. So, uh, having some issues with the webcam of Kevin and the rope. <sighs> oh, 
Okay, well, this is our life today, mm. folks. Unfortunately, these things do happen in tournaments. We've had a, a pretty much flawless connection so far. Last and, four days, right? Yeah, for the last three days, we've had no trouble. And now, well, I mean, height was pretty much in the ascendancy here. Yeah, it we, we can see the next draw from Weaver. So if that's a consecration, then who would have won, but... And it's nah. a monster for battle, so... So that, so that was easy win for Hyped anyway. Yep, Hyped was was definitely going to win that game, uh, no matter what. Unfortunately, well, easy. <laughs> Not easy, yeah. but yeah. So, uh, yep, as you can see, Waver left. Um, I don't think of his own volition, but uh, we will see if we can restore that connection for you as a hell of a time of it here today. Um, with technical issues, it does happen. Uh, thank you to those of you who have stuck with us. In fact, actually, if you believe it, Lothar, um, as our technical issues have mounted, our viewer count has gone up. So <laughs> people aren't leaving, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, so That's please nice. stay with us. We're trying our best to bring you these games. Uh, and in fact, I'll see if I have any other score updates for you. I don't have anything else, uh, any other scores coming in for you yet. Obviously, uh, Dark Onyx and Kit Kats are playing. Uh, and we do have the ties versus my settings uh, game that is going on at some point. We're not sure if that's got back underway yet. That depends, obviously, whether Tice has been able to reconnect after his uh, unfortunate DDoS attack. Um, also, Dart uh, is playing Dale at some point, so we're not sure uh, how that's getting on. But Dart got through yesterday on his birthday, so he'll be hoping to continue that momentum. Uh, we may need to take a very short break here to try and restore the connection with Kevin. He's back. Oh, okay, he's so back. we're gonna we're gonna keep going. So it's just a minor glitch, uh, and we're gonna go into the next game here. So it's gonna be the Handlock of Hyped, uh, going against either the Warrior or the Druid of Hueva Lothar. Which do you favor? I'm still I still think Hyped um, will win this match. Uh, he's a really strong player. He doesn't make well. I, I didn't see any mistakes uh, in the previous games, so I think he's a, he's on top of his game and will push this game through. Do you think Wavell will go for the Warrior or the Druid here? Probably Druid. If he has the double combo. That's the same uh, the same stuff uh, like Thais. He Thais was opting for for the um, Druid against Handlock and I think that Weaver should do this uh, also. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll maybe talk about the deck a little bit more if he decides to pick it. I don't want to talk too much about it in, in case it doesn't get picked. Um, but he does have the warrior, which is, I, I think, no surprise to anyone, a control warrior uh, and a druid archetype. It's a slightly interesting druid archetype. We'll see uh, whether he decides to pick it in here. But it is the it will be the handlock of Hyped, and then he will have to go through the druid, which he can be pretty sure is a death rattle druid. Just as I'm looking at these decks and some of the card choices, I wonder mm -hmm. if Weva has maybe done his homework on Hyped's druid and has uh, teched in some different cards to try and do well, um, every single player that goes in a really competitive tournament should make uh, their homework and watch other players' games uh, through the other game uh, through the other days. So uh, they should know what is the play style, what are the card choices, and maybe you know anticipate uh, any changes in the decks because uh, mm. hard starts is a different type of tournament. Players can sure. change their decks every single day. But there are some conclusions you can come with um, when you just watch the games of other players. Well, that's what—that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, in a form which is uh, a little bit different, because usually you have to lock in your decks for the entire tournament. But in a format like this, where you have the option to tech in cards based on your opponent, coming into this final day, you'd hope that the players were hoping to do well w when they only have to play one game with these decks against one opponent. You'd think they would have done a lot of research, watched the VODs from earlier in the week, see what these guys are playing, because the VODs uh, have gone up very quickly. They are up on the Hearthstats YouTube channel, uh, if you want to go check them out, all the days uh, from the first from the last three days are up there right now. Um, so you'd hope that they would have done their homework and they would know what kind of decks they're going to be facing and and planned accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Now I I have to say I uh, wanted to ask this. One of the things I'm concerned about with this art, Lothar, is the uh, the Fu Manchu mustache on Uther. Um, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Normally Uther has a a great beard like myself. 
But uh, he seems to have the weird mustache thing in that picture, and I'm not sure what the artist was thinking. But uh, did you see? Uh, did you see what nickname did you get from the Twitch chat? Uh, no, Gimli. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and you know, of course, I'm sure you're like a last Lothar. No, no, I was Bono actually. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> because I of the glasses. That's... Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Hipster Lothar and Scottish Druid with you here on the. Uh, on the cast for the Hearthstone Challenger League. It's one of our final games of the day and of the week. So we're excited to bring it to you. Mountain Giant and Molten Giant in hand already for Hyped, as well as two Dark Bombs, Sun Fury Protector, lots of tools in the hand here for Hyped. But Weaver has, again, the big game hunter is in his, o in his opening hand. Absolutely so this, hugely This important. will be an uphill battle for, for Hyped here. And it is the Control Warrior of Weaver. Didn't opt for the druid, so it's just why I didn't talk about it. Um, and this is one of those spots where the decision of of many warlocks to take out the soul fire, uh, thanks to the nerf and putting the dark bomb. This is one of the situations where you really uh, maybe regret that decision or, or begrudge the nerf. I wonder. Hmm. Way of well, clearing this uh, armor smith. You, you still have to play the uh, the giant. You can't really play around become hunter anyway. Sure, so that's going to come down, and the big game hunter is going to clear it pretty much straight away. But uh, Hyped is going to have a low theb to follow up here. No, well, that sucks. Uh, that feels like really bad for uh, for Hyped just to see a one of the <laughs> just one shot it by a big game hunter, as it's still a dark bomb to get rid of that um, pesky big game hunter. Which poses a big threat, actually. Four points of attack on board on a creature that just killed your uh, eight health um, creature of, um, is just enormous. And you have, to, you have to pay two cards to kill off a big game hunter. Most likely. Here for Hueva. Uh, Lotheb is an option for hype tier. He does have the, uh, the sludge voucher as well. But it's going to be just matching low thebs here. The, Copy Pastorino. Indeed. The Shield Maiden is probably going to come down here from Wave, although he may favor the Sludge Boucher. He has the Shield Slam, which is really essential uh, against handlocks when you can build up your armor. And this is the case here. Like, Weva has already 12 points, and handlock doesn't have really a way to chip off that uh, armor points without uh, attacking with a giant or a twilight drake. So those uh, shield slams will have value for sure when there will be like an additional giant or just, uh, you know, a twilight drake or whatever. Definitely. I mean, we, we look at the Zulok decks and talk about those decks, you know, putting opponents on a clock. I've seen very quickly, but Handlock is actually a deck which in many matchups can be on a clock itself. In a matchup like this where you have the warlock, the warrior getting so much armor and getting out of range, it can very quickly be the case where the Warlock is too low and the Warrior is too high, and the matchup is just insurmountable for the Handlock. And even more armor coming on here with the Hellfire. He looks like he's going to use the Dark Bomb to clear out probably the Shield Maiden. Okay, so we just may be having some technical issues again with Weva, but we're going to uh, stick with that and see if we can get through those. Hopefully, that's not going to present too much of a problem. Those DDoSers, man. Those suck. Well, I hope it's not happening to poor Kevin, because he's worked so hard to get to this point. Um, you know, as much as it sucks for it to happen to pro players, for it to happen to you know new newcomers who haven't been in the pro scene, and it does look like we're having some trouble with his webcam. I can see it flickering there at the side. And obviously he's not hes not moving. And he has left. Um, uh, unfortunately, oh, man. We're, we're going to have to get a ruling from the admins there. But we're going to have to take a quick break and uh, deal with these issues. Uh, and we'll bring you an update on what's happening as soon as we can. Hi, guys. Very sorry to do this. Uh, but obviously, as you saw in that last match... Kevin was having some internet troubles, uh, and I myself, I'm having some connection problems as well. 
Lothar has had them and Tyz has had them as well. So uh, we're going to have to call it a day, I'm afraid. We're not going to be able to complete any more games for you on stream uh, as a result of the cyber attacks on both players and casters. There's just no viable way that we can bring you the stream. And like I said, with ties, the most important thing is is completing the tournament without guys getting too many DQ wins. So we're going to work out what's happening with Height versus Weva. I can tell you that my settings beat Tice 3-2 uh, in the end of their series as they came through it. I don't know if I have any more scores to bring you uh, thus far from other games, but uh, I think... That's all we have to bring you. So unfortunately, we're going to have to end the score there. You can go to league.hearthstarts.net to find all the full results. We'll post them on Twitter as well. Uh, and if possible, we'll try and record them and upload them and things for you in the future. But obviously, we can't make any guarantees about that at the moment. We're just trying to get uh, the games completed as, as best as possible. Um, and actually, it looks like I've lost Lothar again now. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Remember to go to hearthstarts.net. Use the Hearthstats. It is the best tool around there for tracking your progress subscribe on twitch we'll be back in february with the champions league uh with the biggest vpn you've ever seen in your life thank you very much for watching